In this video we have the sine of x is equal to 3 fifths and x is between 0 and pi over 2 and we have to find the exact value of sine of 2x. So it looks like we want to use a double angle identity. So we know that angle x is between 0 and pi over 2 so if we multiply that by 2 then 2x would fall between 0 and pi. We know that the sine of any angle is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 2. So what, what we can do here, we have a double angle identity for sine that says the sine of 2x is the same as twice the sine of the angle and the cosine of that same angle. So given the sine of x, so we know what sine of x is, so we need cosine of x. So one of our fundamental identities tells us that we have the cosine squared of an angle plus the sine squared Of that same angle that's always equal to 1. So since we're given sine have x equal to 3 fifths then I can replace this by 3 fifths. This will be squared. So 3 fifths squared is 9 over 25. So we want to solve for cosine of x here, but first we need to find cosine squared of x. So cosine squared of x will equal to 1, bring this over to this side, so that will be 1 minus 9 over 25. And 1 is the same thing as 25 over 25, so we can get the same denominator there. So 1, 25 minus 9 is 16. Over 25. So here then, it's like I have x squared equal to a number. I take the square root of both sides, plus or minus. So the cosine of x will equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 over 25. That'll be 4 over 5. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. And now we have to decide, is that, is that a positive 4 fifths or a minus? Well, the angle here, cosine of x, we dealing that angle, that's between 0 and pi over 2. So in the first quadrant, the cosine is always positive. So for cosine of x, then we have to use this angle right there. So this is 2 and sine of x is 3 fifths. And cosine of x is 4 fifths. And notice we need to get a positive result here. We're looking for sine of 2x. So this 2x is an angle. And we know that the sine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. And the angle here is, be is between 0 and pi. So I'm going to get a positive answer and that's what I want. So if I multiply this out, 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24. And 5 times 5 is 25. And that's your result for that one. So using a double angle identity. Now let's do one more. Let's suppose now that we want to find the sine. 
the same angle that satisfies these conditions, we want to find the sine of x over 2 with these same conditions. I'll remind you that if 0, x is between 0 and pi over 2, then x over 2, if I multiply both sides by 2, I'll get x over 2 is between 0 and pi over 4. So it's still going to be in the, in the first quadrant. So in the first quadrant, the sine of any angle will be positive, and the half angle formula for sine of x over 2 is the square root of 1 minus cosine of the angle, in this case x over 2. This ordinarily would be plus or minus, but since we know that the the angle, in this case x over 2, is in quadrant 1, this will be a positive. So then we just say this is going to equal 2 1 minus, and from the previous part we got 4 fifths for this. Cosine of the angle was 4 fifths, and that's over 2. So let's multiply the top and the bottom here by 5, take two of fractions. So 5 times 1 is 5, and then 5 times 4 fifths cancels the 5, so this gives me a 4. 5 minus 4 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So on top, I will get a 1. At the bottom I'll have 2 times 5, that's the square root of 10 then. And then to rationalize this, multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 10. I'll get the square root of 10 up here in the numerator. And the denominator, it'll be the square root of 100. Radical 10 times radical 10, which is 10. So under these given conditions, then, the sine of x over 2 is radical 10 over 10. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.